Hey there, this is Cameron with Motion Science and I am back with another quick, short little video about tracking in After Effects. Now, most of us all know about the different types, types of tracking like Track Camera, Track Mocha AE, Warp Stabilizer, and Track Motion. But what I wanna talk about today is Track Mask. What can Track Mask do? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna create just a quick, rough mask around this guy. This is for a project I just recently worked on uh, and just finished up and uh, I thought it might be cool to show you guys. So I've got a mask here set to none. And when I go up here to animation, I can now select track mask. And I am just going to track the position and rotation uh, there's not much scaling going on. That is another option. I can track position, rotation, scale rotation, the skew, perspective, and so forth. But for this particular image or particular shot, I'm just going to do position and rotation. So I'm going to turn this back up to full to get as many pixels as I can on the screen. I'm going to click start and I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so I've got the tracking data in there. And if I back up, you can see here, the mask is following the dude. Turn it to half rows here. But yeah, you can see there that the mask just follows the guy. So what can you use this for? Well, the most obvious thing you could use this for is if we go to stylize mosaic, Crank those numbers up a little bit. Uh, we can go into the effects, mosaic, and under compositing options, you can hit plus, and what this will do is it'll recognize this mask. And if I go to mask and turn it back to add, boom, there you go. So now I've got a guy who's all mosaiced out. Let's say you wanted, I don't know, whatever the reason is, but so now he's mosaiced out and the background is not. So there is obviously a hard edge there, but we could feather that. Let's say this is a crime show drama or it's a futuristic sci-fi show. I don't know, but uh, you get the idea. So super cool. So it follows, um, the mask follows the guy and the effect follows the mask. So it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty good. It's not like we have to you know, keyframe where the effect happens with the mask. So once again, there we go. So that's the most obvious use for the mask tracker. Um, if we wanted just to mask the guy's face or add a different effect to this guy, um, maybe one to make him look like a cartoon, I don't know, but uh, you get the idea. So I'm gonna turn the effect off. I'm gonna go back into my feather, turn that back to zero and turn the mask back to none. So now I'm gonna show you a second way to use the mask tracking, which is pretty powerful. Uh, to do this, you have to have a third-party plugin from AE Scripts, and trust me, I am not affiliated with AE Scripts in any way. Um, the last video I did happened to use one of their plugins as well. This one, again, is using one of the plugins, but it's just another favorite plugin of mine. So what the plugin is called is Mask Tracker Plus, and we'll find it right here. Really simple plugin once again. Uh, watch what this thing can do. I'll click Mask, so the keyframes are selected, and I hit Load on the plugin, and it takes just a few seconds to load the mask tracking data. And boom, it's in the plugin. So now I have the option to use this data to apply uh, tracking data to, to any graphics or anything else I want to use, like move, stabilize, corner pin, a pre-comp, a skew, and perspective, no skew and perspective, and so forth. Well, I have this UI graphic that I had previously animated that is on my scene here, and I use the word on my scene because right now it looks like the UI graphic was just dropped over the top of this footage Looks like a motion designer just slapped it on top. It's not integrated into the scene and looks kind of fake. And you can tell that here by, you can see the, the camera movement on the guy in the shot and the UI graphic is just 
like I said, slapped over the top. It's not moving. It doesn't look like it's part of the scene. Well, we're going to fix that by using the mass tracker data that we loaded. So again, I'm going to make sure the graphic is selected. I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see that there's a null applied to the scene. And here it is. Our graphic is now parented to that null. And watch what happens now. So now you can see that the graphic is all of a sudden moving in the shot like it was part of the shot to begin with. And it's much more realistic, much more integrated. Well, let's take it one step further uh, just to show you a little final polish I would do for a shot like this. And that would be to make the graphic 3D, which it is now. It doesn't have to be. The data that was applied to it is 2D. And you can see that here it was just position, scale, and rotation. And this is a non 3D layer. But since this layer is 3D now, all I have to do is apply a rotation to the Y axis, like 20 degrees, and it matches the perspective of the guy in the shot. Because you can tell he's not standing like, you know, straight onto the camera. He's at a slight angle. So now the graphic is at a slight angle with the guy. It looks much more integrated, a lot cooler. It works for me. Looks like a finished shot. So that's what I wanted to show you today, how you can use mask tracking data to apply effects or to even go beyond that and use it as tracking data, position, scale, rotation, etc., on graphics in your shots. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you uh, got something out of it. I hope you learned something new. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, so on and so forth. So until next time, I'm Cameron, and this is Motion Science.